evil media mogul, capitalist pig, legacy media manipulators of ordinary people scum are the inhabitants of the show Succession, which everyone loves and love the individual characters within it. Why do we love the show Succession so much? And why do we love these evil, mercantile, venal villains that make up the cast? Not the actual humans, they're nice people. I mean, you know, the characters they portray. My family have disappeared. I need to know where everyone is and what everyone's thinking. At its heart, of course, Succession is about the succession program for a powerful, tyrannical media mogul and which of his children will become his successor or will it indeed be an appointed executive. The children all vie with one another. Roman, the puckish, mischievous, adorable Kieran Culkin, the dude that played the fella out of Ferris Bueller's Day Off as the sort of wayward, slightly not priapic enough son. Uh, Kendall Roy, the kind of wannabe princeling addict. Shiv, the most capable child, compromised perhaps by her sex and by her morality and more liberal tendencies. The children all vie with one another in an ongoing Jacobean style vying for power with their father at the centre of the web. A dreadful arachnoid, brilliant man who I continue to adore in spite of his cruelty. No one's on my side in this. I need you to protect me, Pinky. Famously, it's primarily based on the Murdoch family, and there have been moments, notably when News Corp had to go to court to face hacking charges, where you sort of got a bit of an insight into like James Murdoch and Elizabeth Murdoch. You know, I heard once from someone that had worked with Rupert Murdoch that the secret to Rupert Murdoch's success was he doesn't believe in his own mortality. He believes he's going to live forever. So you might say, no, I'm not selling you that company or we're going to regulate against that takeover. But Rupert Murdoch thinks, I'm going to live forever. Eventually you will say yes. He's beyond time. He's beyond morality. Is he going to watch? Could we make a note in the minutes that he's watching us? I suppose it gives us a window into a world of power and power is fascinating. And that's why the crown is interesting, because you're dealing with the kind of figures that would have always been covered by drama. If you're watching like theatre in ancient Greece, a couple of thousand years ago, the birth of tragedy, the origins, you're dealing with the gods and kings and queens and fate and destiny. The Pope followed you. Uh, wow. Okay, no, this is not the, is this the real, uh, right. no, Great. I don't Thanks, think this Greg. is a Pope. I love the humour. I love Roman's puckish mischief and that brilliant Cast me as Joker style performance that Kieran Culkin is excellently delivering. Obviously, hugely looking forward to my father dying. I love Siobhan. I love Tom. I love Greg. I love them top to bottom, the whole cast. I think they're absolutely fantastic. But what I mostly like about it is I suspect that it's sort of very authentic. Look at the way that power operates. Look at the relationships between the media and political parties and big corporations and big tech. Look at the entitlement of the children. For me, the centre of it is not the adorable Greg, much as I love him. He's funny and adorable and cute. And for us as viewers, he's the point of entry. That's a person that, like I feel most people could know. Logan, though, I love him. I love the intensity. I think the best line that there's been in it is when Shiv, when disappointed that her dad ain't backing her in a dispute with high level execs, she goes, they cross the line. And he says, there is no line. Everything's moving all of the time, always. That freaked me out because what that made me realise is that he has the perspective of a sort of a god. Well, fucking beast them. We'll go full fucking beast. Seems to me as a person that's been a peripheral media figure and a person that's been around rich people, seems sort of like chillingly accurate. It's beautifully written, wonderfully observed, incredibly funny. It's my favourite TV programme for a while. Squid Game, I like enjoyed it as an eerie insight into a dystopic vision of a bleak sort of, you know, corporate capitalist statist hell where human life is disposable. But for me, this feel, this is happening now. This feels sort of identifiable life, but with the addition of brilliant writing. Martin Amis says that like life sometimes seems for him like a thin gruel. He prefers the world of fiction because he gets to fatten it up with a bit of a juice of his own brilliance. Well, 
And I think Jess Armstrong and the other writers and creators on this show have created a charged reality. And that's the point of drama, isn't it? And indeed the point of comedy to present us a series of masks and visions of reality that are more than life. Some people would even say of mythology, like it's more true because it didn't happen. Some people would say that even about something as potent as the Christian myths, that it's the feeling that it's true. Like, and certainly, you know, you can apply that more safely, I would say, to someone like Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker is more real than, you know, people that you actually know because Luke Skywalker lives in your mind. And now Logan Roy and Kendall Roy and Roman Roy and Shiv Roy and even the brother Connor, they all live in the landscape of my mind as certain archetypes, certain characteristics. You know that naff thing that you might see in a magazine? Which one are you? It would say that with friends, wouldn't it? Which one are you? Are you Monica? Or are you Ross? Like, I think with them, I think, I want to be like Logan. Like, I want to be just self-possessed, ruthlessly dispatching orders like Napoleon. But I'm much more like Greg, occasionally drifting towards Kendall. You sound deranged. I liked it when you met all the lawyers and all the other people that they're vying with and you see the various kingdoms compete. And I suppose it is like something like Game of Thrones, where instead of elves and people in sort of like wolfskin coats, you've got people in, I don't know, Armani, Tom Ford, suits killing each other on the carpet, death in the boardroom. And I suppose, look, the reality of the world we live in, we know this now, it was dominated by a handful of elites in the world of big business, finance, and primarily people in government operate not solely as their puppets, but certainly as their operatives. <laughs> very satisfying piece of music as well very iconic and satisfactory and full of tension anxiety and nervousness Kendall Roy very enjoyable character that seems to divide people people love him some of the time some people find him very very attractive and he's always capable of turning into a bit of a twit isn't he let's not forget that he did that rap that time that was difficult for example always on the precipice of trying to learn the correct jargon and slang de la jour in order to endear himself to ordinary folk while actually knowing that he is cloaked and enshrined entirely in privilege and has never known any other kind of life I feel that Succession is an important, successful show because obviously of its subject and its rendering of the subject, the artistic expertise of its creators and the significance of the subject, that this is something we can all identify. It's done that wonderful job of glamorising. You know, like once I watched a show about Dominic Cummings and it made Dominic Cummings seem so great because Benedict Cumberbatch was being Dominic Cummings. It made it sort of like, oh, I like Dominic Cummings now, the phenomenon of succession means that I now find media moguls attractive. Perhaps on some level, we are all attracted to power. Not attracted in a sense that we like it, but magnetized, i.e. magnetized is a kind of force that is beyond individual will or taste. It's just an impact that it has. And Brian Cox, I feel like, man, I'll go, I'll go watch him do King Lear for four hours or whatever he wanted me to go and watch because it's, his ability to capture the vulnerability of a tyrant is no mean feat. I think it's a fantastic show. I know these things, TV programs, what are they really? A frivolity, a distraction, but they do refer to deep primal archetypal truths that can be relevant. These things are not successful for no reason. There's a power in them and nothing is more powerful than power. But that's just what I think. What do you think? Tell me what you think in the comments below. Do you think oh, it's just a frivolous TV show? Who cares? I can't be bothered with TV no more. Don't even watch TV. If you enjoyed this review, let me know in the comments. Give me some questions, some insights of your own. If you liked it, have a look at this video, similar thing where I review a program. And if you need to meditate now, and why wouldn't you, have a little look at this thing. Please sign up to my mailing list where I will inform you regularly of what I'm up to. For example, I'm touring in the UK from February to May next year. Come and see me live in the north, in the south, all over England. Thank you.